Weather data is in a folder of its own. Weather data reading and processing. Transys can read a whole bunch of different weather data files. Typically in the United States, we use a data set called TMY2 or TMY3. This stands for Typical Meteorological Year Version 2 or 3. The Energy Plus folks have a huge archive of worldwide weather data, and we taught Transys to read the Energy Plus weather data file format. In Canada, there's a file type called CWEC, which is Canadian Weather for Energy Calculations. There are two versions of the CWEC database. One is in a native CWEC format. The other version is just redone over in the Energy Plus format. So Transys doesn't read the actual CWEC format. It reads the Energy Plus format, and all those CWEC data files are available in the Energy Plus format. For European users, there's uh, Medianorm is a weather data creation software. I will not speak to its accuracy, but we see a lot of people using those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a TMY3 file. Uh, it's type 15. I'm going to drag it out here. I'm going to open it up. It's got a bunch of parameters. First two are grayed out. Something that I chose over here set those for me, and I don't have to worry about them. This is where you set up the slope and azimuth. You're just defining a surface. Surfaces are described by two angles, the slope of the surface measured up from the horizontal. I'm just going to define a surface. The slope of the surface is 45. And you can define multiple surfaces here by changing this parameter value. Each surface has three parameters associated with it. One is the tracking mode. Again, click on the more button and it'll tell you that a value of one here means this is a fixed surface. You can automatically set it to mode two, in which case it'll track the sun in some way. There are various different tracking modes and you can choose between them by setting that parameter. We're just dealing with a fixed surface here. Here's the slope of our surface, it's 45 degrees. Azimuth, if you click on this, it'll give you a little bit of a definition as to what the angle convention is. It's a little bit confusing, but suffice to say that zero means it faces the equator. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, a zero will mean you're facing south. If you're in the southern hemisphere, that same zero means you're facing north. So zero here just means you're facing south for us in the northern hemisphere. Look at the external files. It has Madison, Wisconsin, where I am located. And then it calculates all sorts of different things. I tend to like to put my weather data location in here. Now I'm going to make a link from here to here. It's asking me for the temperature. It's asking me for beam radiation. When I look down my list here, be a little careful. This is beam radiation here, but that's the beam radiation on the horizontal. Okay, here we go. Total on the surface. That's not what I want. I want beam on the surface. There we go. Then sky diffuse. Then ground reflected. It asks me for the slope. Now I could go in here and I could enter 45 there. That would be a perfectly acceptable way of doing this because that's a that's a constant value. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna make that link here. And then it asks me for the incidence angle. There are my inputs. If this is a little difficult to look at, if I select one of these links here and click that button, it'll readjust the list so that the, that particular link goes straight across. My convention for weather is a light green line. All right, let's run that one. Okay, well, looks a little similar to what we saw before, but obviously we're not now getting solar radiation at night, so a little bit of a difference.
there's another component called type 9. It's in the data readers, generic data files, expert mode, free format. That's the one I use a lot when I'm doing simulation against measured data. All that type 9 does is it reads data. It doesn't process the data in any way. In the physical phenomena directory, there is a radiation processor. Based on what you know, there are a whole bunch of different algorithms that can be used to generate the split between beam and diffuse radiation. That's really what it boils down to. If all you know is the total horizontal, then you would use 16A. If you know something about the temperature and humidity, then there's a slightly improved algorithm which will try and estimate how cloudy it is out based on the, the data that's being given. One other situation that happens fairly often is a solar radiation uh, pyranometer that is on the plane of the collector itself. One thing you could do is just look at your inputs and say, well, it's all beam radiation. There's always an incidence angle of zero because that way, mathematically speaking, what you'll get is exactly that amount of radiation. But in order to know that, you might have to go poking around a little bit in the documentation to understand what it does with these various values. The other thing you can do is if you want to, you might put together a fake surface with type 16 and get its estimate of what the ratio between beam and diffuse radiation is. And then you might use that ratio on your measured data. I've done that a few times. Use the estimated ratio on my measured data to get some sort of idea of how much beam and diffuse there are.